Now let's see how we can animate SVGs using frame of motion. For the most part, we can treat SVG elements like any other DOM elements, but there are some additional properties that we can animate only on SVGs. We'll be working with complete components that we haven't touched so far. So let's open it and, as usual, import motion from frame of motion. Here we have our SVG component that consists of two elements, the circle and the path describing the check mark inside of it. We'll create a sequence in animation where we'll zoom in the circle first and then draw the path for the check mark. To zoom in the circle, I'll add a motion prefix to it, set initial scale and opacity to zero and animate them both to one. Let's save the changes and see that now we get this nice bounce effect on the circle. So that was the animation that we could also apply to any DOM element. Now let's take a look at a special property called path length, which can be used on a continuous SVG path to draw it on a screen. Path length takes values on a scale from 0 to 1, where 1 is the full measured length of the path. So I'm going to add motion prefix to a path, set initial opacity and path length to 0, and animate both properties back to 1. I'm also going to add a transition prop and set delay to 0.2 to make it run after circle bounce animation, and set the duration to 0.5. Let's save the changes and open the component, and we can see this nice animation with a check mark drawn on a screen. To control the direction in which path is appearing, we can use property called path offset. We can set it to 1 and animate it down to 0 to draw the path in reverse. Note that at the time of recording, there is an issue where TypeScript fails to recognize path offset property. So we'll need to add a TS ignore pragma to be able to run our code. Now if I save the changes and open the component, the check mark gets drawn from the opposite end. Let's remove path offset property and add some basic animation to the text to make the component even better. I'll add motion to H1, set initial Y to 30 and opacity to 0, and animate Y to 0 and opacity to 1. To make this animation fit nicely with SVG animations, I'm going to add a transition with a delay of 0.3, and set duration to 0.7 to make text fade in slowly from the bottom. Now let's save the changes and see how all animations work together. Last thing that we can do is to dismiss the model after animation is done by using on animation complete callback. We haven't seen it yet, but in essence it lets us execute custom code when the elements finished animating. I'm going to add it on an H1 element, since it's the last one in our animation sequence, and call on complete callback that will tell the model to close. So when we get to complete step and H1 animation finishes, the model is going to disappear. This happens a bit too fast, so let's add a small delay before calling on complete. One nifty way of doing that is to set repeat delay property to one second. We've seen it used on animations that run multiple times, but we can also set it on a single animation, in which case it will wait for one second before marking animation as finished and calling on animation complete. So let's navigate to the component one more time and confirm that the model remains open for one second before being dismissed.